Giving birth to a child is a blessing for any family, but sadly, there are individuals who prove themselves wholly undeserving such a gift. Recently in South Korea, a deeply disturbing and heart-wrenching case came to light, leaving the entire nation in shock. The case involved a 15-month-old child who passed away, with the parents concealing the incident for three years. The incident sparked a nationwide conversation on the importance of safeguarding the welfare of children and prompted a re-evaluation of the system in place to protect the most vulnerable members of society. Let's delve into this appalling case known as the Kimchi Container Child Abandonment Case. The unfolding of this shocking case began with a comprehensive investigation by the Ministry of Health and Welfare based on the E-Child Happiness Support Project in October 2022. This investigation was designed to identify at-risk children using information such as the non-vaccination of preventive shots for children and adolescents under 18. Regrettably, the survey did not mandatorily include children under three years old, which unfortunately delayed the uncovering of this case. However, a public official in Pocheon noticed that despite being registered as a resident, Choi Juan had not undergone any infant health checkups or kindergarten registrations, which raised suspicions. Despite multiple attempts to contact the child's mother, Mrs. Ha, it was discovered that she did not even reside in Pocheon and didn't respond properly, leading to a police report on October 27, 2022. The police, believing they only needed to confirm the child was alive, asked Mrs. Ha to bring a photo of the child. However, the photo she provided was not of Chuan, but another child, whose age did not even match Chuan's. Chuan, born on October 12, 2018, would have been four years old at the time of the report. When Mrs. Ha was asked to bring the child in person, she brought a child who appeared to be only about two years old, claiming it was Chuan. However, it was later revealed that the child she brought to the police was actually born from her new live-in boyfriend and not Chuan. After the case was publicized, a tip revealed that Mrs. Ha had even posted a strange request on a local secondhand trading platform, Carrot Market, seeking a four-year-old girl to impersonate her daughter. Under further inquiry, she told the police she abandoned Chuan due to financial difficulties. When the police visited the place she claimed to have abandoned her daughter with Mrs. Ha, she seemed indifferent, as if it was someone else's business. The police, suspecting the absence of any reports or witnesses in a frequently visited area, sensed something was off. From this point on, the police, having shifted their investigation to a serious criminal case, mobilized all their resources. Mr. Choi, 29, the father of Chuan, was five years younger than Mrs. Ha and was incarcerated on fraud charges at the time of the incident. The two were divorced and separated at the time. Extracting a confession from Mrs. Ha proved to be challenging even after receiving a confession from Chuan's biological father. Her testimony kept changing and she appeared both calm and naive. Mrs. Ha, a resident of Pyeongtaek, changed her daughter Chuan's registered address to Pocheon, where she had relatives, after Chuan's death, indicating a degree of calculated forethought. Initially, she denied the allegations, claiming she had left the child on the street and consequently lost her. When a profiler was involved and the digital forensic results were disclosed, Mrs. Ha reluctantly confessed to the crime during police questioning. She had a boyfriend at the time, However, it was revealed that she diligently visited her ex-husband in prison, totaling over 70 visits. Although she always visited alone and never with the children, Mr. Tre didn't suspect anything. Nevertheless, Mrs. Ho informed Mr. Tre about the child's death and asked for his help in abandoning the body. Strangely, Mr. Tre did not ask any questions about the child's death and instead helped dispose of the body. Chuan died at their residence in Pyeongtaek and was stored in a carrier bag, then moved to a relative's house in Pucheon and later handed over to her father, Mr. Tre, upon his release from prison. Mr. Tre, who stored his daughter's body in a kimchi container, became the main suspect. 
Fearing the state's pursuit, he discarded a shopping bag containing the body in the canopy of his villa's rooftop in Sodemungu. Ultimately, three years after her death, on November 14th, Chiwan's body was discovered. The small body of the child, which was unrecognizable due to being wrapped in 12 layers of wrapping paper and plastic, evoked a sense of despair among the investigators. Chiwan's remains, which had been moved multiple times by her parents, finally found rest. The two were arrested on different charges, Mrs. Ha for violating the Child Welfare Act and hiding a body, and Mr. Tre also for hiding a body. Shockingly, it was later revealed that Mr. Tre carried his daughter Chuan in a kimchi container for two years. He worked as a delivery driver and carried the shopping bag containing the kimchi container with Chuan inside while working and even going to the sauna and internet cafe. It is known that he even held into the kimchi container while sleeping. Mr. Tre, while shedding tears, stated that he slept hugging the container because he felt sorry for her, which seems to be an attempt to reduce his sentence. During the investigation, Mrs. Ha shed tears and expressed feeling wronged. Mrs. Ha admitted to leaving the child alone at home without feeding her, but vehemently denied the suspicion of murder stating that she returned home in the morning, found the child dead, and out of fear, hid the body. She only admitted to asking her husband to abandon the body. Mrs. O mentioned that about a week before the child passed away, she had a fever and was vomiting, but she didn't take her daughter to the hospital and neglected her. According to a broadcast investigation, when Chiwan was alive, there were red spots all over her body. One expert noted that it is difficult to see this as simply atopic dermatitis and could possibly be due to poor hygiene or not changing diapers for a long time, leading to skin diseases causing the spots. Also, the child's physical condition was extremely skeletal, indicating that she was unable to eat properly for a long time. Moreover, even after Xuan was no longer alive, they fraudulently received 4 million won in child support from the government, using her as an excuse. In addition to Xuan, the couple also had a four-year-old son whose condition was also severe. There were frequent instances of him wandering around the neighborhood alone in thin clothes during winter, leading neighbors to report it to the police. They also didn't send the child to kindergarten. In fact, the mother, while her husband was in prison, met a lot of men through dating apps. The day before Chuan's death, she even stayed at a hotel with her live-in boyfriend. After meeting with her partner, she not only neglected young Chuan, but also didn't take care of her son. Therefore, there is also a possibility that in addition to neglect, there was habitual abuse towards the children. And astonishingly, it was later revealed that the couple, Mr. Tre and Mrs. Ha, had one more child. In April 2016, four years before the youngest Chuan passed away in 2020, their second child, born in December 2015, died from an unidentified accident just after his 100th day. The x-ray results of the child, brought to the emergency room in a state of cardiac arrest, revealed a significant fracture in the skull, and traces of healed fractures were found in the ribs and arm bones. At the time, the couple claimed that the skull fracture resulted from the child falling off the bed and hitting his head, and that the chest and arm injuries were accidentally caused by their first child. Experts who examined the second child's x-rays defined it as murder by unnecessary malice. Children's bones are elastic, making it difficult for fractures to occur. For instance, a rib fracture would require force equivalent to kicking a soccer ball. A twist fracture, severe enough to break a child's arm, is impossible without an adult grabbing and twisting or turning the arm. Despite the clear evidence of abuse, astonishingly, the police station that investigated the case concluded that the second child, who was 100 days old, died from a simple accident. This leads to speculation that Chiwon, who also died, may have been exposed to abuse. At the time of the autopsy, Chiwon's body was severely decomposed, making it impossible to determine not only the cause of death, but also any injury sustained before death. 
The cause of death is suspected to be airway obstruction and hypoglycemia, but abuse resulting from neglect cannot be ruled out. However, one clue was left on Chuan's body. A hole was found in the skull during the autopsy. Experts said that the body could have been mummified with the skull damaged, appearing like a hole in the back of the head. Considering this couple may have serially murdered their children, covered it up, and continuously collected allowances, it is difficult to dismiss the suspicion that for Mrs. Ha, Chuan was nothing more than a tool for receiving financial aid. According to a broadcast investigation, Mrs. Ha had been adept at lying since her school days and had a criminal record. Surprisingly, she graduated from the police academy. Even her classmates, seniors and juniors who were close to her, didn't know much about her, only remembering that her father was a police officer. However, the investigation revealed that her father was not a police officer but worked in the transportation industry. As her past was uncovered, more lies were revealed. She had even been punished for fraud. Such lies persisted throughout the trial process. She consistently denied murdering the child or engaging in any activities that led to the child's death, asserting that her only wrongdoing was seeking help from the father to conceal the body out of fear. In May 2023, the prosecution demanded 13 years in prison for Mrs. Ha and five years for Mr. Che. There was a public outcry that the sentences demanded were too light. On June 15, 2023, during the first trial at the Ujongbu District Court, Mrs. Ha was sentenced to a total of seven years and six months in prison, including five years for child abuse resulting in death, two years for hiding the body, and six months for violating the Social Security Benefits Act, plus 80 hours of child abuse treatment programs and a five-year employment ban at child-related institutions. The court provided reasoning for Mrs. Ha's sentence, stating, as the person responsible for nurturing and protecting the victim, she did not administer health checkups or unnecessary vaccinations, and despite signs of health abnormalities, she repeatedly left for extended periods, ultimately leading to the victim's death. They also noted, the method used to conceal the victim's body demonstrates the sinister nature of the crime, and it is also challenging to perceive any serious remorse. Mr. Che was sentenced to two years and four months in prison for hiding the body. The sentences were disappointing compared to the court's position that both had poor character. Nevertheless, Mrs. Ho immediately filed an appeal. She still denies the charge of child abuse resulting in death and believes the sentence is unfair. The prosecution is also considering an appeal. With both parents detained, there was no one to hold a funeral for Chuan, who was abandoned until the end. The siblings of both parents refused to take the body, citing financial difficulties. Eventually, on January 20th, the Korea Child Abuse Prevention Association held a funeral for the child. The body was so decomposed that it was difficult to dress, so hospital staff bought pink clothes and placed them on the remains during the ceremony. Chiwon, who had spent more time trapped in a kimchi container than her 15-month life, was finally laid to rest in a forest in Cheruan, Kangwon Province, where she could breathe fresh air in the sunlight. Chiwon had more days crying alone than smiling during her short life. Hopefully, she is neither alone nor in pain in heaven. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.